welcome to lesson 8 part 2 we're now into section 20.2 we're using the textbook of the basis of our lessons so this is now three phase power generation and if you remember from our previous lesson we looked at single phase then we looked at two phase and we looked at uh, two phases at 90 degrees then two phases at 120 degrees basically now we're adding in three phases so same principle we have a fixed magnetic field in this particular case from a north pole to a south pole across our generator on the rotor of the generator we have a red phase a blue phase and a yellow phase now we've labeled them B1 and B2 a1, A2, C2, C1. And you can see over here, a 1 represents the start of the winding and a 2 represents the end of the winding. This is very, very important. If you don't get your starts and finishes correct, you'll get some strange things happening around your generator. So the generator is made up of three windings, winding A, winding B, winding C and each has its own defined start and its own defined finish very important to understand this or currents and voltages will be going the wrong ways and like i said you'll end up with some very funny results a three-phase alternator has three windings and we've labeled them a b and c and they are physically displaced by 120 degrees If we were to draw them on a graph and we used A phase as the beginning phase, that's, it's only arbitrary, you would see that A phase begins and as A phase approaches and starts to come down, but approaches the first 120 degrees, you can see B phase is starting to rise. And as B phase reaches another 120 degrees later that's 240 120 plus 120 is 240 then the c phase begins to rise so at any instant in time we can have different voltages so you can see here zero degrees to 360 one turn that means that the rotor has turned through one turn and a phase has gone through one complete cycle but C phase has only gone through two thirds and sorry, B phase has only gone through two thirds and C phase has only gone through one third. If you look at another turn, so 720 degrees later, we've now turned the machine around twice. You can see that A phase has gone through another whole turn and B phase has gone through um, one and two thirds. C phase has gone through one and a third. And of course, A phase has gone through two complete cycles over 270 degrees. And once we go through three turns, of course, A, B and C have all been through their appropriate full rotation so where voltage waveforms produced by a three-phase alternator with a a leading b by 120 degrees which leads c phase by 120 degrees so we're going to end up with just get my pen up we're going to end up with this 120 degrees relationship all the time and that's the important thing to remember with three phase there's always going to be 120 degrees between each of the phases physically of course once we start to add some capacitances and reactances and inductors etc to the situation we're going to be able to shift some of these things in a relationship to each other 
but if we had a load that is fully resistive then currents and voltage will all stay in phase but in a three-phase machine or three-phase generator the voltages themselves that's the A phase the B phase and the C phase voltages are always at 120 degrees separation it's a physical way the machine is wound as we saw on the previous slide so they're always at 120 degrees the current may shift in relation to them those kinds of things but the voltages themselves will always be at 120 degrees from each other so here is our Just change my cursor back to an arrow. So here's the phaser diagram. So again, we have A phase, B phase, C phase, physically at 120 degrees. That's the important thing to remember. They are at 120 degrees from each other. So Now, there's an interesting thing here we probably need to discuss before we go too much further. You'll notice our phaser diagram is rotating anti-clockwise. You can see the orange arrows. That's the normal way the rotation happens. But notice the labeling. A phase, B phase, C phase. We rotate our three phase phase a diagram in an anti-clockwise direction but we label it in a clockwise direction so you've got to be careful and uh, look out for that but that's the relationship so you can see that here I'll just uh, change my cursor again so here's a phase And that angle in there, 120 degrees, which is the angle between A phase and B phase, which is this one in here. So just to reiterate again, it's a physical relationship created by the way the machine is wound. There's a physically 120 degrees between the phases of the way the machine is made and that 120 degrees between voltages will not change always going to be 120 degrees the relationships to the currents as long as it's a resistive load will stay in the same shape or same locations but as I said as we introduce capacitance and reactants the currents will shift from where the voltages are. So again, we're rotating anti-clockwise, but we label clockwise. The horizontal here, always the reference. So this horizontal here is always going to be our reference. The origin at center and we always draw from the origin to the right on the horizontal becomes our reference so here we are nice and complex so our three phase animation and you can see here on the right hand side where my cursor is you've got a phase B phase and C phase and then in the bottom right hand corner we've got the three phases overlapping each other and you can see there's a nice 120 degrees again if you say you look at the red phase every time the north or the south goes past the pole on the north north south pole goes past the appropriate coil pole the lamp for the a phase goes bright 
when it does it on the B phase out here on the blue one same thing north and south goes past that pole it goes to its brightest and then C phase which is the yellow one when it goes to its brightest is when the north and the south goes past the appropriate pole so again here on this diagram it's all about the physical relationship between the poles fixed at 120 degrees and the voltages are going up and down at different rates at different times so at any particular point in the cycle the voltage of A phase will be different to B phase will be different to C phase and that difference is created by the 120 degrees So let's do a little bit of math example around that. Let's say we had a three-phase alternator that produces a maximum voltage of 400 volts. Determine the voltage of each phase when the A phase is rotated to a rotational angle of 90 degrees. So we're saying A phase is at 90 degrees. What are the other phases? So if A phase is at 90 degrees, then B phase will be at 90 minus 120. So we know that when the B phase is at 90, we know, so when the A phase is at 90, the B phase is at minus 30. So applying the same principle, the C phase will be 90 degrees minus 240. Of course, it's 120 and 120, so I've got to subtract another 240 degrees. So 90 minus 240 is minus 150. So these are the three angles we now need to work with. So we've just used some simple geometry to calculate that when A is at 90, B will be at minus 30, and C will be at minus 150 degrees. We know we've been told our maximum value is 400 Therefore, we've got three phase angles to worry about, 90, minus 30, and minus 150. And if you remember, the instantaneous value, because that's what we're doing, we're actually finding the instantaneous value at any particular angle. The instantaneous value, remember lowercase v for instantaneous, is the sine of the angle. Multiply by the Vmax. So for the 90 degrees, we're going to have the sine of 90 multiplied by 450. And you'll find that comes out at 400. Because the sine of 90 is 1. Then we're going to find the voltage at 400 volts. So again, the sine of minus 30 degrees multiplied by 400 going to give us minus 200 volts and third time just for the practice the sine multiplied by minus 150 multiplied by 400 well again is going to give us minus 200 volts One of the tools that we use to make sure that uh, our phases are connected and rotating in the right order because it's very easy to get A, B and C mixed up is a rotational phase indicator. And you can see here it has red, white and blue and you just connect that to each of the phases. And if they're rotating in the correct direction, the correct LED will illuminate 
If it's incorrect, the red LED will illuminate. So when the phase rotation is clockwise, the correct light on the phase rotation indicator simply lights up. It's got a little bit of uh, electronics in there that detects the direction of these phases and illuminates the appropriate LED, demonstrating that it is connected the correct way. The next thing we need to know about is the uh, generator. The generator itself, simple formula. The frequency that you get out of a generator is the uh, speed in represented by N, which is rotation in uh, revs per minute, divided by 120. And P is the number of magnetic poles. So again, this uh, number on the bottom uh, is just a constant that is used to convert revs per minute so that your, out, your answer comes out in frequency in hertz. So frequency is NP divided by 120. Nice simple formula, and if you look at the way the machine is wound, it's pretty obvious why the formula works, I think. So summing up our whole lesson or introduction to AC systems, three phase power is more economical and provides a smoother power transfer than does a single phase system. All three phase alternators have three separate windings and their angles are always placed at 120 degrees to each other. This arrangement produces three sine wave voltages that are out of phase from each other by 120 degrees. The instantaneous value of the phase voltages in a three phase system is the same as for a single phase system. V instantaneous represented by a small or lowercase v multiplied by the sine of the angle to V max. So sine of the angle multiplied by V max gives you the instantaneous voltage. In a three phase system, phase voltages reach their maximum in a particular order, and we call that the phase sequence. So A must reach its max first, then B must reach its max, and then C. And in Australia and New Zealand, a system is considered correct if all its voltages and things rotate in an anti-clockwise direction and that's why we rotate our phaser diagrams in an anti-clockwise direction because in Australia and New Zealand that is seen as the accepted standard. Also got a YouTube clip that uses some nice animations and a bit more explanation can't run it from this particular video lesson, but uh, provided on the e-learning resources so you can have a look at that video. Hope you've enjoyed your introduction to three-phase systems.